Hello. Hello, I'm Charlie Brook and welcome to So Wrong It's Right, a panel show about Britain's favourite subject, failure. We're here to celebrate life's biggest balls-ups, the sort of massive mistakes that end up turning full circle and becoming perverse kinds of triumph. The Germans have a word for this phenomenon, full and circle perverse and triumphant. <laughs> Kipling, of course, had a famous quote on how to accept failure with dignity. Shut up and eat a cherry bakewell. <laughs> nice. uh, with me tonight to snatch defeat from the jaws of failure are my guests, the dismal Rufus Hound, the deplorable Victoria Curran and BAFTA-winning David Mitchell. <laughs> I'll be asking them a series of questions about the worst things in the world and awarding a point to whoever I think has given the best answer. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the scores so far. You're currently all lying in third place with zero points. Uh, the stench of defeat is sickening, frankly. Um, it's a little disappointing, but there's still everything to play for as we go into round one. Uh, which is called Wrong Time, Wrong Place, uh, in which I'll be asking my guests to delve into their own calamitous pasts to come up with the worst thing that's happened to them in a certain situation. Uh, this week's theme is, oh, it's holidays. Victoria, what's, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you on holiday? Well, I have been on a Club 1830 holiday. I don't... I, I don't put you and the phrase Club 18 to 30 holiday in the same universe. That's very kind of you to say. I did go... You can guess whether I went because I, I wanted to get laid a lot or I was covering it for the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> but I went and... I was quite Surely looking... both. <laughs> <laughs> and considering it was for the Daily Telegraph, did they think it was a reenactment of the year 1830? <laughs> 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 but nobody has any sex on the menu, but they're sort of drinking holidays. It's, it's, it was, Sounds all right. It was just, <laughs> and nobody's 18 either. It was a sort of concrete box full of vomiting children and it was you drank all day it, the one thing that freaked me out immediately is at breakfast they gave you this drink called orange but it wasn't orange juice or orange it was just a glass of orange <laughs> i think it had rum in it and all day people drank it was like it was a sort of a sex abstention holiday because people were just insensible w with drink but the thing that, that was the ho the weirdest thing that anybody said to me while i was there and it didn't really depress me at the time, but it does now. There was this, this chap, I remember, he, he just left school. It was a celebration holiday. And, uh, and he said, well, you know what's great about leaving school? So I'm going to get my own place. It's really nice for my dad, because he's worked his whole life. He's brought me up. It's been all responsibility now. You know, he can relax, enjoy, you know, his old age and, you know, look forward to having some grandchildren. And I said, how old's your dad? And he said, he's 32. <laughs> Did you go on your own or with friends? I took a friend who we're not really friends anymore. <laughs> I said, oh, it's really good, I've got this holiday and we're going to get it free with the Daily Telegraph. It was awful. You just, you sit in a room and they, they're sort of buckets of drink, all different drinks poured in a bucket. And people just literally just are lying on the floor vomiting. That's the essence of the, of the although you could probably get pregnant from the hotel swimming pool. God knows that. <laughs> I mean, it really, they just, they just drink themselves unconscious and then they, they get flown home in an air ambulance. It does sound, It kind of sounds all right. It sounds like some form of treatment. Uh, <laughs> considering that this is meant to be your worst holiday, you didn't pay for it. <laughs> how, how can that possibly be bad? Let's find out from normal, honest-to-goodness people <laughs> who here would like a free holiday. <laughs> I rest my case, Charlie. The well, thing is, if you haven't paid for something, you're never going to appreciate it. That's the job. <laughs> I'm just that raises to... a lot of questions. <laughs> all, sorts, all sorts of things you can conclude from that. Uh, David, what's yeah. the worst thing that's ever happened to you on well, holiday? I, I, I've not had very traumatic experiences on holiday, really. But it was, it was sitting in a former church in Swansea that had been converted into a cinema, which was called the One, Two, Three, because uh, they named their screens One, Two and Three. <laughs> and watching Dumbo. <laughs> and while it poured with rain outside, and, and while steam slowly rose from everyone else in the cinema. Um, probably me as well, but I was blaming them. <laughs> And it, I think that sounds lovely. That does sound lovely. It's not lovely. That sound like cinema about paradiso. It. Well, no, there's nothing lovely about it. The place is incredibly sort of muggy and humid. There was no rake for the seating. I don't know why I'm gesturing, this is a radio programme. But it's like you sort of sit on chairs and on a flat, you know, in a place, a once a place of worship. <laughs> 
went on a holiday once which consisted of... It was a three-day trip to Spain on a car ferry. There and back, and there was no yes. entertainment. No, it and was a car ferry to Spain. So yes, presumably it was took five days to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Three days. It was a day and a half there and a day and a half back. And it, it, but there was a cinema on board, and I think this is the worst cinema. So there was a cinema on board where the um, it was showing Mortal Kombat the movie. <laughs> Rufus, can you do any worse? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I had by way of competition was. Uh, just when I started getting paid work as a stand-up, I was able to use some of that and go on a uh, two-week holiday to Tunisia with the girl that I hadn't been going out with, then had been going out with, then hadn't been going out with, <laughs> then was going out with. And That's a long way of saying on-off girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm trying to do is labour the point of uh, how... Very how, successfully. How thank you very much. <laughs> just how on off it was because this was meant to be the two weeks where finally we put our differences behind us but what actually happened was it was uh, I don't know if anybody's been to Tunisia but there's not a great deal to do but outside of the walls of the hotel uh, the girl I was with was very fair haired and that is clearly something of uh, an exotic thrill to the locals so any time she left she basically got felt up uh, and if we were in the souks and things like that she was just permanently being sort of poured at. So she didn't really feel that, uh, that she wanted to leave the hotel. So we basically developed our own brand of uh, all-inclusive Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Where we were sort of penned in. And rather than this being a uniquely bonding experience that saw the relationship last, it was then she realised she had a totally captive audience to plough over every minute detail <laughs> about why we'd got together and why we'd broken up and who I'd seen in the mid-time. Until it literally got to the point where I said, we can't stay in the hotel anymore. And I told her it was because there had to be more to Tunisia than we were seeing. But it was actually because I genuinely hoped she was going to get abducted. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> but, that, but that, Charlie Brooker, is how bad that holiday was. <laughs> and at no point did my grandparents offer me a Werther's original <laughs> or somebody else pay for it. <laughs> I, think, I think you were... I mean, what I want to know is, who had you been seeing during the time apart? Because, I mean, if you actually took the relationship seriously and cared about her and wanted a future, you would have just waited, wouldn't you? You'd have sat and waited for her. Were you, I mean, if you were out every night... <laughs> asking people on dates, seeing other people, you know, that you didn't care, you didn't mean anything. You put yourself in a position where she's asking you these reasonable questions. <laughs> and this... <laughs> is this taking you back? This, ultimately, Charlie, <laughs> is why all of my friends are men. <laughs> well, I'd say that all things... All things considered, I'd say I'm going to... I'm going to award a point to David. Because... <laughs> because misery is relative. <laughs> Let's not forget that. <laughs> uh, 